So, uh, this week we are talking about what is candy to you. So, what do I believe candy is? What is my definition of it? And, um, also, what are my beliefs on selling it? Now, this is something I have sat down and thought about a lot. Like, really hard. Um, because, for me, um, I used to think that basically anything that was made out of pony beads, I considered candy. I don't care if you called it candy or not. To me, I considered it candy. Now, there's a difference between when you have the little kids, um, like, people who are outside of the rave scene and make, like, pony bead stuff, and then there's a difference between people who know what candy is, know about the rave scene, know about how people feel about it, but still continue to sell things, you know, and so for me there was this big conflict because I saw that people were making these big, huge, massive things that took, like, weeks, months to finish, and then they can't really give it away or trade it because it's that much of their time and that much of their material. So I was at this conflict. I was like, I can understand why they'd want to sell that, but to me, I don't feel that's right. But how I personally feel, I don't think that that should be applied to everybody. So I actually got in a fight with my fiance about this. This is the one fight we've had in like the, the year that we've been dating and it was about freaking candy. <laughs> So, so he's like, he's like, you have to make up your mind about how you feel about it. So, um, I got like really, really upset, but that is something altogether. But, um, so I sat down and I wrote out a big list of what I believe it is. So I'm going to go through there, but I'm going to have to answer questions. But, um, um, so first one is, what do you define candy as? And, um, to me, I kind of have um, two separate groups of things. Um, I've got a generalization of certain things that I consider to be candy, and then I've got a separation of bigger projects, bigger things that I can understand why someone would want to sell that. And so if you're going to sell something, then I think that that should not be labeled candy. Um, so, um, I believe candy is your necklaces, bracelets, cuffs, basic 3Ds. Basic 3Ds are, like, things that you always find tutorials on. Like, your disc cuffs, your UFOs, the really, really basic, just the X's, 3Ds, stuff like that. It's basically things that anybody can make. Um, or your miscellaneous small projects like your little freestanding uh, peyote stuff, your candy stars, um, the little 3D penguins, 3D turtles, stuff like that. Things that are um, probably about, yeah, yay big. Anything really bigger than that is a whole nother thing together. But again, your basic stuff, the stuff that is commonly traded, like you, you can go out to a rave and you find all this stuff and it's, it's all the stuff that people have on belts. People aren't bringing out like giant massive candy armor to trade with people. It, it's always your, your cuffs, your singles, your bracelets, your necklaces. That is what I consider to be candy because it is traded. It is commonly associated with friendship. Um, but to me, um, I believe that it's most often made with pony beads, your charms, your letter beads, toys, stuff like that. Um, and that it's not to be manufactured or purchased. Uh, I believe that it's something that you should make yourself. Um, and I value it because of the time put in to make each piece unique. And uh, I believe that it should be something that's either traded at raves or with friends. Um, it's traded to be given away uh, to symbolize that bond between two people, whether it be a new friendship or whether it be that, that memory. It just symbolizes that moment in time. Uh, it has an extreme sentimental value, and this is why I believe that you shouldn't sell it or that you shouldn't destroy it. Like, if you have some problem with somebody, um, well, I guess destroyed out of anger. If you, if you really have some kind of issue with someone, I think that 
you need to be completely level-headed and you realize that you're no longer going to talk to this person, cut off all ties. And if you feel really strongly that you need to take it apart, then take it apart with respect and that you, you shouldn't be emotional when you do it. Um, now, as for the bigger things that I can understand why someone would want to sell them, um, it's big projects like your big backpacks, clothing, gas masks, epics, um, and pieces that have been embellished with expensive materials like EL wire, gemstones, precious metals. Um, like I saw this one girl who made a candy bracelet that had like a legit sapphire on it and like silver and all kinds of stuff. And um, that stuff is expensive, you know, and um, so because you're making these big giant things um, like Paul's candy coat. We, we, I don't remember if it was the candy coat at the top hat, but we were talking about it, and um, he said the equivalent of that would be like something like 200 singles. What is someone going to do with 200 singles? You know, it's not practical to do an actual trade for it, unless that person is making you a couple really big things also. But majority of the time when you're, when you're trading something like that, the other person doesn't know how to make those big things. So it's like... You have the, this big object, this big thing that you made, but you spent a bunch of time and you spent a bunch of money to make it, and you can't really trade it and you don't want to give it away. So in that situation, I can understand someone selling it so someone else will enjoy it, where they can get money back for their time and their materials that they put in. Now, I don't think that you should take advantage of people. I don't think that you should charge ridiculous amounts of money. I think you should calculate out how much your materials cost, how much time you spent on it, so get paid adequately for your labor, and then maybe make a little bit on top of that. But we're not talking like huge ridiculous amounts of money. Like people selling a small itty bitty cuff for like 20 bucks. That's ridiculous. It's probably like maybe at most like two to three bucks for materials on that and then less than an hour to do that it, it's like I don't know people sell stuff for ridiculous prices and it kind of makes me sad that people will try to take advantage of people like that um, now if you wanted to make something really big and call it candy like if you want to make um, a dress and call it a candy dress um, I feel that when you call it candy and when you say, oh, this is my candy dress, then at that point in time, I think that you shouldn't sell it and that you can only trade it or give it away. And the reason that I'm doing this is um, I think that there needs to be a little bit more distinction between what is art, like this is a beaded dress versus this is candy, this is rave related you know, um, or the candy community related, if you're not in the rave scene. Um, because people make these big, giant, huge things that are borderline sculpture artwork, you know, and they spend all this time into it, but then they can't get that time and that money back for what they just did, versus you've got people who are just making it for fun or just making it for the rave scene or just making it to give away. Um, now... I don't think singles, cuffs, necklaces, your basic 3Ds, stuff that I mentioned in, in the beginning, the stuff that I consider to be candy, the small things, personally, and this is just me, I don't believe that stuff should be sold because, again, there's so many tutorials on it, anybody can make it, and I think that it's commonly associated with being traded, and because of that, I consider that candy, I guess. Um, now, in the case of, like, Hot Topic and Spencers and stuff, because it is manufactured and because it is being sold, I guess I wouldn't consider it candy, but I don't like that anyways because I don't like the, the mass production of it. It's just, I don't know. I just, I, mm. it's, for, for me, on, on the Hot Topic stuff, I guess it's more of the, 
exploitation of the rave scene because of the the reason that they're doing it is not because they want to sell these cool beaded bracelets is because they realize that the rave scene is really popular right now and that's something that they can make money off of and again like i said um if you're making candy and selling it to regain the time and the materials put in i can understand that but they're purely doing shit for profit and that kind of bugs me i don't like that um now um again i went over the the if you're making big projects and call it candy then i don't think that it should be sold um so that is what i believe candy is and that is a little bit about what i think is okay to sell what do i believe is not okay to sell um I believe that there is a very big difference between candy that's traded and candy that is sold. Um, like I said, if you're going to sell it, don't call it candy. Call it beaded, whatever the heck you just made. Because um, that is, that, I think at that point, is, it is artwork. It is beaded. It's a beaded bracelet or the beaded dress or whatever you want to call it. I, at that point I think artwork totally separate from candy. Not to say that candy can't be artwork but I think that if you are putting it in the category of the rave scene of um, the candy community then it needs to stay there. I think that because it's kind of becoming gray and things are merging together. I think that we need to separate it out a little bit because if we say this is beaded stuff, this is what people are selling versus this is candy, this is our community, this is our culture, I think it'll be a little bit better. And I just made an entire video about please do not go on pages where people are selling candy and hate all over the page, say malicious things, because that is ridiculous. Um, I'll link to the video here so you guys can see it, uh, if you haven't seen it already. And, um, this is basically how I feel about candy now. I know the way that I used to feel is very different from how I see now, because the, the more that you're in the scene, the more that you see, the more people that you talk to, you realize that life is not black and white it's not it's not good and bad it's not everything kind of melds together so you have to i guess figure out where that 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 fine line is for you and like there's no absolutes it is okay to make exceptions i guess and so the big projects the big the big artwork and stuff those are my exceptions i guess um you're free to have your own opinion and you're free to disagree with me and that's okay. I'm okay with that. You know, um, this is how I personally feel. You don't have to adopt any of my beliefs, you know. Um, but I hope that this was helpful for you guys to see a little bit of how what I used to think has evolved into what I think now. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.